Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on the new features and improvements within the version 30 accounts release. My name is Abby and I'm going to be your host for today. We also have Michael on hand to answer any questions that you may have. So please do keep them, quest them questions coming throughout the session. Don't feel like you need to wait till the very end. OK, so this is what we're going to be covering on today's session. So we're going to do a brief introduction um, all about the install, how to get access to the install um, and the compatibility. We'll then move on to the 30.0 release where we'll talk about the AI report finder that was introduced. We'll talk about the bank feeds rules user interface that's been updated. And we'll also talk about the 64-bit uh, compatibility that's now available with the version 30.0 release. Lastly, we'll look at 30.1, where when you're now able to import statements into your uh, bank feeds. And also as well, you can restore into practice data. There's uh, other enhancements that I want to talk about. and We'll just briefly cover those at the end. Before we do, I just want to get into it. I just want to launch a poll on your screen there. And I'm just wanting to know, as of today, what version are you currently using of your Sage 50 accounts? So is it version 26 and below, version 27, version 28, version 29, or version 30? So some of you may already be on for, uh, version 30. Uh, the version 30.0 was released in January. If you're not sure how to find out what version you are currently on, you can, in your software, go to help along the top, then into about in the drop down and in the top left hand corner under program details, it does tell you your version number. So we'll just give it some time there for others to to pop some votes in. I can see we've got plenty of people voting at the moment. Once we've got enough votes in there, we usually wait until we get around 70, 75 percent and then I'll share those results with you as well. Let a little bit there we go so we've got around 70 percent so don't worry if you haven't voted i'm just gonna close that poll down and i'll share the results with you okay so it's quite interesting today so we've got four percent of you which are on 26 and below we've got four percent of you on 27 22 percent of you on version 28 majority of you at 52 percent on version 29 and we've got 19% of you which are already on version 30, which is really great to see. OK, so I'm just going to hide those results. And we'll get straight into it. So first question, when will I get version 30.1? So it is available already. Um, it's going to be released gradually in terms of um, auto update prompts that you get in your software and um, they'll come in due course but you can get access it um to your uh, you can get access via the install hub to the uh, version 30.1 if you rather wait until you are prompted you'll either get an auto update prompt in your software when you log in or you may receive um like email communication letting you know that there is an update available again you, you can get access to the install hub if you've got the handout downloaded you can um, click on those green hyperlinks. If you don't, you can just type in sage.co.uk forward slash install or forward slash help into your web address, into your browser, um, and you can visit those as well. OK, so I want to cover a bit more about the importance of upgrading. So we've got quite a range of you on different versions. And these are some key points that I want to make. So you want to um, remain compliant. So it's compliance. You want to remain compliant with all regulatory requirements. You want to future proof your software and stay in line with system updates, such as your Microsoft operating system and changes as well. So they do regular updates and changes to their operating system. So that's why we always want to uh, make sure you're future proofing um, your systems as well. Security, so you want to keep your data secure with the latest technology and security protocols. And lastly, uh, efficiency. So you want to keep up to date with the latest enhancements, including automation to ensure processes are efficient as possible. 
one last key part I want to mention before we do um, get into the, uh, the new features is compatible operating systems. So you want to ensure that you um, in compa compatibility and optimal performance when installing version 30.1. So 30.1 will be restricted to the following operating system. So you have to be on one of the following to be able to use 30.1. So you have to be using Windows 11, Windows 10, Windows Server 22, Windows Server 2019, or Windows Server 2016. So users that are not on these systems are encouraged to upgrade to a more recent version of Windows to access the latest features and security enhancements. So something to be mindful of before upgrading, if you have multiple machines with Sage installed, and you might have maybe it's just one, one or two that might be on a different operating system and that operating system falls outside of this list, they will not be able to upgrade the Sage software to version 30.1. And you remember, everyone must be on the same version of Sage 50 accounts. You are going to find plenty of information on our install hub, all about checking your systems um, and, and all that. So you will you will find that on the install hub. OK, so. Let's get into the uh, the features. So as you can see, over the years, we have listened to your feedback and suggestions and implemented them into the software. So, for example, version 28. We introduced business dashboards and remote data access improvements. For those of you on older versions of um, Sage, that was formerly known as Sage Drive. Version 29, we introduced features such as Get Help. That was a really big, um, big feature, a big request that was in, in product support. Um, we also introduced improvements to bank feeds. Now, a couple of those are quite big changes. Um, but some of the changes can be as small as character increase for product description and part numbers. So to you, that might sound very small, no impact, next to no minimal, uh, minimum to no impact at all. Whereas to someone else, that could have a, um, a huge impact, positive impact on how they run their business. Now we're at version 30. So let's take a look at what we've implemented so far in the version 30.0 release. And that's from January, and then what we um, will be what we've released in the 30.1. Okay, so 30.0. So as I said, this came out in January this year. So some of you may already be on that uh, that version. So the first one I want to cover is the AI report finder. So this is our first AI powered feature in Sage 50 accounts. It uses everyday language to search for reports that you need. It searches through hundreds of reports across all modules. And the report finder makes it easier than ever to find the right reports. Now, to use this feature, you do need to have a Sage account connected to your company. It is available in each module. The first time you access the reports window, you will be prompted to enable the report finder. Once you have performed your search, you can then rate the results to help improve future searches. So let's go over to my software and we'll have a look exactly what this looks like. Just had a quick question coming there from Jennifer. I'm on version 28. Do I need to install version 29 first to get the updated features in version 29 or go straight to version 30? That's a really good question. Um, and we do often get this question. Um, you can go straight to version 30 from your version 28 or your version 27. Um, you can you can jump. You don't have to go up um, per version and everything that was in version 29. You're going to get in version 30. And I'm going to cover this more in more detail towards the end of the session. OK, so in my software, I'm just going to pop into customers and I'm just going to go into reports. Now, I don't have anything favorite at the moment in my reports, 
So mine is going to open in Report Finder as default. If you do have favourite saved, so we'll just quickly favourite one there, not come out of it. If you do have favourites uh, saved, you just simply click on Report Finder, which is directly below the favourites tab. Now, mine's already activated, so I don't have the little top hat um, animation at the top. So this is what it'll look like once you've um, activated your Report Finder. So as you can see, you've got your search bar, your search button and clear. You've got how does this work? So this tells you a little bit more about how to use this feature. So you just simply ask as if you're chatting with a colleague. You've got some examples to try. You can just click try it now at the end. And you've also got some information here. Learn more about AI and everyday language searching. We're just going to use one of these examples. So we're just going to use could you summarize the payments we've received from our key customers? So we'll click try it now. It's going to run that search for me. So what that's doing is that look, that's looking for any possible reports um, that fit under that, like, like you say, like that kind of question. So you can see it's done that search for me. I've now got a list of reports. I've got 24 results uh, matched for your search. That's 24 possible reports that I could use to get that information that I need. Now you might look through this list. And it might be none of them are actually quite fitting what you need. At the bottom of the, the list here, it says can't find what you're looking for. Try our report library. So that is a green hyperlink. You can click on that um, and that will take you to the relevant information. In the bottom uh, right hand corner, you can rate these results. So it says how are these results? And you've got a little thumbs up and a little thumbs down. So that's going to help improve future searches. So I would definitely recommend um, doing that as well. Now this is, you know, I, I've asked a question targeted around customers. So I can say I'm in customer reports. If you know the name of the report, you can just simply type it in to the search bar. But also, you can actually sit this function searches across the whole software. So you don't have to be in a certain area of the program to search for, for a report. So you can, as you can see, I'm in customer reports still. So if I just type in, can I see my P&L by department? If I click search. You can see I've got 23 results. That's 23 possible reports relating to my profit and loss by department. So you don't have to be in that area of the software to be able to use this function. You can be anywhere in the software and search for reports. So you can get that information a lot quicker um, just by using the report finder. If you are wanting any more information, you can visit our help centre um, and it'll just give you a little more information about how that works. But like you say, you've got you've got links um, to, to click on there as well. Like you say, you've got the help option in the top right. OK, so we'll pop back to the slides. A really good question has come through and I know Michael did pick that up, but I do want to highlight this. Um, and it's do you need to back up your data before you install um, the newest version? So we always recommend um, to, to do don't forget to take a backup before um, you do install. Because um, if anything interrupts the, the install, um, at least you've got that backup um, saved and your data is safe. So do make sure that you do take a backup if you are thinking of upgrading today. OK, so we'll now cover the 64 compatibility. So this was a common community hub request. And we're going to cover more about the community hub towards the end of the session as well. So it was a request for a 64 bit compatible application. So now Sage 50 accounts can integrate with the 64 bit applications. And um, so the most common example I can give you is Microsoft Office. So the likes of Outlook and Excel. You will have enhanced performance, and that's due to increased available PC memory. Now, default installation, you will be given 64-bit. 32-bit will be available, but you will have to get that manually from the help centre. 
please note as well, there will no longer be automatic update prompts in the software for 32-bit installations of Sage 50 accounts. Updates will still be available. You will just need to install those manually. Um, you will still receive comms, so um, whether that you, you or one of your colleagues received emails for the updates, um, then you will still receive comms. You just won't get the, uh, the auto update prompt when you log into your software. Now, a common question we do get with this is, well, how do I know which one I'm using? Am I using 32-bit or am I using 64-bit? If you have the handout downloaded, that green hyperlink in, along the bottom um, will help you identify that as well. The link in the top right, which is a green and white button for 64-bit compatibility, if you or your colleague or support, you know, you might have IT or support, want to read more into this, I have improved, uh, included a, an article for you to share with them as well. OK, so coming back to the timeline earlier, you can see, especially from version 29, where we really started to implement changes to bank feeds by changing the look and feel of bank feeds in the 29 um, release. In version 30, we've continued those improvements by updating the Create Bank Feeds Rules window, the Rules Approval screen and updating Manage Rules window. You can also um, you now have the ability to import statements or transactions into bank feeds for those banks that are not compatible with an automatic feed. But let's take a look at that in more detail. Like I say, we've had a couple of questions come through. Please do keep them coming to keep me and Michael busy. OK, so the bank feeds rules user interface has been updated and enhanced to provide a modern end-to-end -end user experience and making it easier to set up and manage your rules. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail um, in bank feeds rules today, as we do have a dedicated session for this, um, as we have a bank feed series. Now, if you're not familiar with bank feeds rules, what you do is you create rules, which is a set of criteria that transactions when they are downloaded from your bank they must meet a certain criteria for the software to create the transaction automatically you do also have the option to approve them before they are posted into the software but they are there ready for you with all the posting details to approve now gives you a more en modern enhanced experience and it simplifies the process so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a short video on what to expect when creating and managing rules in the new version. The first area we're going to look at is creating a rule within version 30 and the new bank fees rules interface. As per previous versions, you can create rules by selecting a match transaction, then in the Confirm tab, choose Create a Rule. The modern interface introduced in the 29.2 Bank Feeds Improvements release has been extended to the Bank Feeds rules, ensuring a consistent and contemporary look and feel throughout. Any rules you create will only apply to newly downloaded transactions and not to retrospective transactions. Begin by giving your rule a name. Anything marked with an asterisk is a mandatory field. Next, select one or more of the following criteria for your future transactions to be posted into the software. You can also change the condition for the first two options by using the drop down menu. Within the next section of this window, you can enter other posting details, including account type, record, department, and any additional references. Start by selecting the account type from the drop down menu. You can also split bank transactions, but please note this option is only available when the account type is set to nominal. You can split by percentage, or when the amount has been selected as part of the criteria, you can also split by value. 
To select a supplier record to apply to future transactions, use the drop-down menu where your supplier list will appear. You can also use this box to search for a record once the list has populated. Once you have selected a department, if applicable, and added additional references, you can then select whether you want to approve future transactions before posting, or if you want for the transactions to be posted automatically with no approval needed. To finish creating your rule, click here. In previous versions, approvals for all banks would be within one window with a prompt upon logging in. Now, you'll find an approvals tab within each bank feed. This tab will only appear once you have created rules that require pre-approval. The list of transactions will appear with the option to approve or reject them. In cases where transactions are split over nominals, you can view the individual transactions by clicking here, from where you can also approve or reject all. Approved transactions move to the Confirm tab, where they can be unmatched if needed. However, this action will not reverse the transaction being posted into the software. Rejected transactions are not posted. Instead, the downloaded bank fee transactions return to the To Be Matched tab and will appear in the bank transactions list on the left, awaiting to be matched manually. Like the Create Rule option, Manage Rules also have a new look and feel. Manage your rules within the Bank Feeds module by clicking here. Within this window, you can view and edit current rules, and at the bottom of the window, it shows how many rules out of 300 are available. If you want to delete unused rules, select a rule and click here. To no longer pre-approve a rule before posting, without going in to edit the rule, you can select the checkbox to auto-post the transaction. To view or edit a rule, select a rule and click here. Here changes can be made to the criteria, however the name of the rule cannot be changed. Okay, so if you do wish to get registered for the Bank Feed series, in the bottom left is the webinar registration button. You can click on that if you have the handout downloaded. Okay, so that's version 30.0. So let's start with version 30.1. So you can now, with the version 30.1, you can now import, manually import bank statements or list of transactions rather from any bank. And this allows you real-time access to bank transactions. So you might be wondering, why would you use this option? So an automatic feed, which is a live feed, may not be supported. So this allows you to still use the bank feeds module. For if you have other compatible banks that you use a live feed for, you can now use the uh, manual function to import your, your transactions into your bank, uh, your bank well, the bank feed, rather than manual bank feed. Um, and it allows you to still use all that same functionality as if you had an automatic feed. It might be that you want to import transactions with an earlier date than what could be downloaded through bank feeds. So I believe bank feeds, automatic bank feeds, allows, uh, I think it downloads the last 90 days. So it might be that you've got some old reconciliation you need to deal with um, and you can import the rest of those transactions from your bank. And also as well, you might want to top up transactions for banks connected to automatic feeds. So let's take a look at the next video demonstration on how to import your uh, statements into your 50 account software. Again, keep your questions coming throughout.
importing bank statements via bank feeds offers you enhanced flexibility, as long as your bank supports the correct file format, where you can gain greater control and efficiency in your reconciliation. By importing your statements, it can speed up your reconciliation process similar to bank feeds, especially in cases where your bank doesn't support live transaction downloads. To begin, click Get Started on the bank account and choose the option Import Statement. For more support and guidance on importing statements, either press F1 on your keyboard or select the Help option. To continue, click here. Within this section, you are provided the supported file types. If you use CSV or Excel documents, you may need to format your file as they require specific column headers. For more guidance, click here. To upload a statement that you have downloaded from your bank, click to select a file from your device, then click to review transactions. Here, you can view a summary of your import, the number of transactions and the date range. The table below will also show whether it is money going in or out and the amount. Once you are happy with the information and want to continue, Click Confirm Import. Once the import is complete, you can then close the window. On the bank feeds home screen, it will indicate when a statement was last imported. At this point, you can start matching and creating transactions and all the automatic matching and rules functions will be applied to the transactions you import going forward. In the future, if your bank becomes available for live feeds, you can connect at any time. To do this, select this menu and then click connect to automatic feed. Okay, so off the back of um, this this new feature, we are introducing a dedicated session for the uh, this this process. It is starting from next Tuesday, and I'm going to show you towards the end of the session how to get registered for part three of the bank feed series if you wish to do so. Okay, so the next feature and sort of nearly the final feature I'm going to show you is uh, in version 30.1, you've introduced the option to restore backups into existing practice data. Now, it's up to you how you want to, to use this, but some of the, the, the benefits and the ways you could use it is could be an access, um, a cop it's good to access a copy of your data in a practice environment. So some of the feedback we've had off the back of the session is someone was really happy about this feature because that means that they could, any new members of staff that they had, um, they could show them how to do things in a practice environment, but with real data relate, related to their company. You could run reports, again, kind of similar as learn processes without, without impacting live data. Great thing about it is other users are not impact, impacted, so they can continue to work in the live data whilst uh, practice data is being used. And using this feature, it just avoids having to resync live data via connected services, so the likes of bank feeds and remote data access. Now, one thing I do want to, to make a, a point of before we look move into demonstration is when you use the practice data, when you're using your own data, it is going to clear and reset once you exit. So you can't save what you've done in the practice data. It will clear once you have um, exited that. But let's have a look at how to access it in the software. Now, the example you see on the screen at the moment, you'll only get those two options if you access it from the company selection screen. The demonstration I'm going to show you today is we're going to access it from within my live company.
So I'm going to pop to my Sage. And in my Sage, I'm just going to go to File in the top left. And then just under the normal restore option, we've got the option to restore into practice company. So I'm going to click on that option. And at this point, because I'm in with my live data, it is only going to give me the one option to use my own data. So I'm going to restore from a backup. So I'm going to browse to the backup file. It's so going to pop to my desktop. And I'm going to go into my demonstration. And we've got a file, um, a backup file already prepared here. So we're going to click open and we're going to click continue. So it's telling me the location of the backup and where it's located, the name of the company on the backup, but also the version number. Now, don't worry if your version is lower version than what you're currently on. Don't worry, it is going to convert the backup. So we'll click restore. Now, my backup's quite small, so yours may take a little bit longer, but it's telling me it's checked the data for me. It's telling me it's got no errors. So that's great. So we'll click OK. And we'll just click close on the report. And it's now going to be asking me to log in. Now, it's not going to necessarily be the, uh, the live login details that you use to log into your data normally. If you've changed your password at the point of the backup that you're using, um, so if your password is different then, when the backup was taken, you need to enter that old password because when you take a backup, it also takes a backup of the, the login credentials that you have. So I'm going to pop in my password. And that's me logged in to the practice data using my backup. So as you can see, I've got a, a, a bright yellow banner across the top indicating that I'm in practice data. It is throughout the software, so it doesn't disappear to make sure that you are not um, you know, mistakenly in the live data. So a couple of things that I've mentioned. So it might be that you want to teach someone new how to do a process and not use the live data. This is a process, so you could come in here. You could, you might be that you want to use it for references. So you might you might not have a company archive. Um, now they are company archives are take this default, but you might not it might have been on text for whatever reason. So you might only have a backup um, available. So you might want to come in and have a look at some old records or details. You might want to run a report so you can run reports throughout the, the software as normal. So it might be you want to run a customer report, supplier report, a management report. You might want to try a process. So, for example, it might be that you've got a correction to do and you're not quite sure what exactly you need to do. So what you can do is you can come in here. So we'll go to transactions. Just to, let's just say I want to change something on my uh, my payment here. So I'm going to go into edit. Now, again, I still might not be familiar with the process. So what I can do is in help in the um, the edit window and click help. Drag this over. It's opened up on a different screen. And the help feature which is the one that was introduced in version 29. In product help now, so we can click on, for example, it's it's targeted help. So you can see we've now got one correcting transactions in Sage 50 accounts. So we can open this up. We can go to edit a transaction. It's going to take us straight to that section. And then I can follow the steps alongside the window being open. So I can drag this around. I can drag it onto another screen if I do have one i can also resize it you can open it in the browser if you want to print it off you can also zoom in if, if i don't think the zoom is actually working um i thought you could zoom in maybe to make it a little bigger um, but there's, there's various ways that you can do but it is it does stay remain open for you whilst you follow the steps so that's one of the things that you might want to try might be that you want to run some uh Manage reports along the top for a previous financial year. So there's loads of things that you can do in here um, that the you know you don't have to worry about it impacting your live data. To go back to your live data, you simply like a company archive, you simply go to File in the top left, down to Open, and then Open Company Data. 
At this point, it's going to get you to select your company. And then pop in your live login details, so the normal login details if they are different. You can now see that yellow banner has disappeared and I'm now um, back in my live data. Again, if you are wanting to find out any more information on the Restore Practice feature, I'm going to show you where you can find the release notes on our Help Centre. OK, so I'm just going to pop back to my slides. Again, if you do have any questions, um, do feel free to pop them into the questions panel. We've bit, gone a bit quiet on that front at the moment. Whilst waiting for any further questions to come through, we'll just briefly talk about other enhancements. So when you upgrade, if you use connected services, there's a chance that you are going to see this managed cloud collection, cloud connection wizard. So the aim is to streamline the process of reconnecting your connected services should you need to do so. For example, if you're using remote data access or bank feeds. So users accessing these services may see this wizard. So you're going to see two points, two options. So you're going to see the first one, which is reconnect using your Sage account. Um, and if you, we would recommend using this option. Um, and all you need to do is just simply log back in with the Sage account that was used to set, uh, that was originally connected to the company. Once you've done that, it'll simply re-enable all the connected services and you can continue the process as normal. If for um, certain reasons that you don't have access to the, uh, the Sage ID that was set up originally, it might be that your, it's your colleagues' details um, or they're written down in a, a notebook you might not have access to at the present moment. You can click the second option, which is work without using your Sage account. So you can continue. That will allow you to work locally. Um, so connected services haven't been disabled, but all the menus and options have been um, hidden. Once you do eventually connect that Sage account, all those um, options will um, become available. So only choose that option if you have to. OK, so I have talked quite a lot about the different features and options um, that we've got available. And I'm just coming, kind of coming back to um, the question that we had earlier. I can't remember which one it was. Um, so, yeah, it was just from Jennifer. So about, up, you know, do, can you jump from one version and then skip a couple of versions and go into the latest version? And, and you can do that. So we've got something called the Upgrade Matrix. If you have the handout downloaded, you can click on that little button and it will take you straight there. But I am just going to search for it on our help center. You can also do this. If I can spell today, upgrade matrix. So if we just type that in and search for it. Try that again. Been a little bit temperamental for me today too. So just give me a brief moment. There we go. Thought if I'd say that it would come up. So okay, so we're gonna look for the Sage 50 accounts upgrade matrix option. And it's gonna take us to this article here. Now you can use this uh, article as well to compare variants. So if you want to upgrade your license from essentials to maybe standard or professional, you can compare the differences on that. Alternatively, we, today we are going to just talk about the compare versions option. So if you click on the compare versions. And I know we have some of you on version 26 and below. So what you can do is, for example, it says here, which version are you upgrading from? So let's just say we're on version 26. And what this article does is it lists everything that was included in each release. Now. To answer Jennifer's question in more detail, say if we're on version 26, everything that was in version 27, so everything listed here, everything listed in version 28, everything listed in version 29, and everything li listed in version 30, you're going to get, if you jump from version 26, 27, 
all the way up to 30, you're going to get access to all these different features. Now, you can also click on each link and that will take you to a guide so you can read more into that information if you want to read in the different features in more detail in your own time. So you have got access to that as well and help, that will help hopefully uh, reassure you and, and, you know, get you a little bit excited about what you, you could actually be doing and the automation you could be using and, you know, how you could do processes a lot quicker. OK, so the other one I want to talk about is the Community Hub. It is also listed on your handout as well. So we'll just pop back to the Help Centre. If you are in your Help Centre, you've got the link for the Community Hub along the top. So we're going to click on here. So the Community Hub is like a forum where you can come in here. You can ask for, you know, guidance or um, on, you know, if you want to do a process quicker, you could say, well, actually, I'm doing it this way. Um, does anyone have a quicker way of doing it? And then other users, ambassadors um, can come in and, and uh, you know, answer your question. The main point I want to make, though, is under quick links on the right hand side, you've got submit an idea. So if you click on submit an idea. It's going to load up for us. And what you can do is you create an account. So you will have to create an account to pop a, an idea. But this is where um, all of our users um, can come and um, make suggestions, ideas for future versions. Um, this is um, what we use um, to, to come up with these new features and, and enhancements because you are the users. You are the ones that are using it on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, we, we just want to make your life a little bit easier. So um, pop any ideas, suggestions that you have. Um, you can add a new idea at the top here. You can also vote on other other people's um, suggestions as well. One last thing I want to show you is the where the release notes are. So on the home page of the Help Centre again, if we scroll down, we're just going to go into install your software hub. And we'll just click off that. So I just want to show you it's in the What's New in Sage 50 Accounts 30.1. And in this bit here, if you scroll to the very bottom, you can see all changes in 30.1 and there's a button there for you to view those release notes. So I'll go through that again. I'll show you that journey again. I'll just close these down. I'll go through that. So home page of the Help Centre. You want to go in to install your software. So that's on this one here. Install your software. What's new in 30.1? And then at the bottom of this section here, you've got view release notes. OK, so no further questions have come through. So what I'm going to do is I am going to wrap this session up. I want to say thank you to Michael, who's been on hand today to answer your questions, but also thank you to you all for your participation. Just a reminder, we've got plenty of sessions over the next couple of weeks, so don't be shy and get registered.